Today we're going to tie in all the things that we've learned so far and add in a few other factors of using the FCR, priority fire zones, digital communications, and how to operate with a wingman in the DCS H64D Apache. Alright guys, today we're going to take all this information that we've been talking about with the FCR, with the longbow net, sort of tie it all together, show it how to practically use. Again, this is the combat ready series. We're not trying to deep dive into every nuanced bit of how this stuff works, but rather just kind of get the functionality and get the basics down so you guys can start putting warheads and foreheads and having fun with it, uh, as opposed to trying to be scientists about it. All right, so here's the scenario that I've got, and I've got some multiplay video that I'll, I'll slice in here later and kind of show some of these things in action, but uh, for right now, this is just me. I've got a two ship right here. We're just gonna hide behind this hill. And out here, I've got a mech company, and then I've got uh, a Shilka on either end with uh, another vehicle, just, just to give us something to work off of. Now, we talk about priority fire zones. We talk about the FCR. Uh, we need to understand something. Uh, if this aircraft here has the FCR, which it does, and this one does not, they're, they're not automatically sharing information. You've got to send information. So I think sometimes that might be a little bit lost, that these things aren't always talking to one another. If I scan with the FCR and I pick up all these vehicles, this guy doesn't know anything. I've not shared anything with him. So there's a couple things we can do. One, we can actually share our target, and that's that uh, our RF handover. Okay, and we'll, we'll see that button here in a few minutes. And then also I can transmit all of these targets to their TSD and give them something to focus on. Uh, what's not gonna happen is I'm gonna create different priority fire zones. It's gonna do a scan and just start immediately feeding him uh, his own type of information. He, I, have to hand, I have to sort of spoon feed uh, targets and we'll, we'll see that in action here in a little bit. But when we talk about priority fire zones, what do they do? We can use them even if we don't have an FCR. All right, uh, we can use them because they show up on the TSD and they give us some sort of guidance. So if I draw a box, in fact, I'm just gonna draw a box while I do this. All right, so if I draw a box here and I send it to my wingman and I say, this is priority fire zone two, and he doesn't have an FCR, this can still work. And what I mean is it still shows on his TSD. He can still see where his TADS is looking on the TSD and therefore he knows that he's looking in the right area. All right, same thing, I can do it for, you know, another aircraft as I can have them look at a particular box. Another thing I could do is create an entire box that delineates the entire target area and then have basically subcomponents of that box and help people orient themselves. So understand that we're coming from the context of Back in the old days, we didn't have this sort of way to visualize stuff, so it was it was all through voice, right? So you had to give somebody a grid, and then you had to show them, you know, try to identify something on the ground and say, hey, do you see that hilltop? Do you see that, that you know, building, that road intersection? And then try to work guys around that. And even then, they may get confused and, you know, just things get a little bit discombobulated. Now we have a way that through the TSD, we can actually see uh, where we're looking, and what we're looking for. All right, so all these different priority fire zones, we can use them, and then same deal with a no fire zone. So we don't need an FCR to make those boxes work for us. They're, they're, they can work together, but they are not exclusively uh, uh, married together to work together. All right, so let's jump in the aircraft, and maybe I can demonstrate a little bit of what I'm talking about. All right, so as we get to our target area, I'll apologize ahead of time. This, this is gonna be a little bit of a meandering side of video. I'm trying to condense a lot of information and sort of talk about some complex things and try to keep this video in the sweet spot of 10 to 15 minutes before you get too bored and don't wanna watch anymore. So there's a lot I'm trying to cover with a lot of different uh, concepts. So I'm gonna get this thing in a stable hover. I'm gonna jump into the front seat and then uh, we'll go through some of this stuff. All right, here we are in the front seat, and boy, it has been a minute for me since I've been up here, so hopefully I can remember how to do this stuff. Uh, we've got the TAD selected. We've got the uh, aircraft armed. I go ahead and set the FLIR. All right, so we look out here, and we can see that we've got our targets. I can look out visually and see that we've got that mech company off here to the right. We've got the Shilka, another Shilka uh, off to the left. 
And again, as I was saying on the TSD, we can see where we're looking. All right, so that's great, and that's a helpful thing. Remember, back in the day, we didn't necessarily have this, right? So it could literally be uh, sliding up to each other and say, okay, you know, from my position heading uh, 100, do you see the row of, you know, hills? Yes, I do. Okay, do you see the, the vehicles down there? Yeah, and you start working through this stuff. Okay, it takes time. Um, I've watched it take a lot of time. Now what we have is the capability to differentiate that stuff much faster. So what we're really talking about here is we're trying to build situational awareness between ourselves and the flight in general. So again, I'm assuming that I've got one or two, uh, maybe three other aircraft with me. And how do I build the situational awareness? So one is just look out the window and point things out. Another is that we can use uh, the database and start transmitting things. So uh, first thing we can do is add a point. So I'm going to go here to point. And go to add I've got target selected I'm gonna move my cursor to where I want it and I'm just gonna drop a target there by hitting enter and now what I can do is transmit that so I've got that already selected so I hit transmit I'm gonna send that to whatever flight numbers I want to and I can hit send of course it's not gonna go through uh, but think about what you could do if you had multiple aircraft okay so you could say all right I want gun one uh, or, or gun two to, to focus on this area so I can drop a target there and just send it to him gun three I want them to focus on this area and I'm gonna send it just to him so there's different ways to kind of skin that cat we can do that maybe in a different video of uh, fire distribution uh, but point is we can drop these points and send them off another is of course that we can just uh, find whatever targets we want to eliminate so in this case Let's see if we can get this guy in here. All right, so we're going to laze. And I've stored him as target 05. Same deal. I can just move my cursor up to there and uh, transmit target 05. All right, to whoever I want to. So these are different ways that we can use the longbow net system to transmit data uh, to our wingman. Now we were talking about the priority fire zone, so let's take a look at how to handle that and use that. So first of all, I'm going to delete these targets just so they get out of our way. And I'm going to change the map satellite just for fun. All right. So we know the targets are generally in this area. So what we can do is just establish, again, a priority fire zone. To just delineate the entire target area. So I'm going to go to zone one types, party fire, auto is fine. And I'm just going to hit enter. I'm going to move and create my box. Enter again. All right, party fire zone one. I can then again transmit this to the rest of my flight. And this just gives them a box to work on. And there's different ways to again control your fire distribution. And it could be as simple as okay uh, uh gun one is going to work close left to right gun two is going to work close right to left gun three is going to work far left to right and four is far right to left so uh you could just work off of this box you could also let's delete this you could also set up a trp i keep moving the uh, t the uh, tads there uh we can set up trp box same deal priority fire zones now you're thinking to yourself okay but how do these priority fire zones work if these aircraft don't have radar that's again okay because i am going to move the uh ads now on purpose you zoom out so it moves faster you can see so now if i'm gun two and i've been assigned priority fire zone two let's pan up zoom in Okay, so we're panned in, we're zoomed on that party fire zone. Now I can see that everywhere I'm scanning is inside that zone. So now, I, oh, here's a target. Let me uh, laze him and see. Okay, he's inside my zone. All right, so I'm scanning, I'm scanning, I'm scanning. And I see something else. Well, let's say there's something here. Okay, there's a shulka somewhere over here. But let's say we see something here, we scan it, and we look, and we're like, oh, we're not even in our zone. Okay, so that's definitely not our target area. All right, so this is how we can use these boxes. We, we don't need the radar at all. All right, so when we talk about the radar, and we're doing a quick scan, and we're picking up all of these targets. 
Priority fire zones. What does it do? It just prioritizes what the radar wants us to engage. So in this situation, we have no priority. So the aircraft is going to prioritize for us. And in this case, it's wisely prioritized the air defense assets that it's detected. So it's detected a, uh, a Shilka off here to the right and another Shilka or an air defense unit, I should say. It's detected these, these air defense units. All right. So it's prioritizing those. Let's say that we only have enough ammo to do one thing. Or let's say that our mission is solely to engage, you know, BMPs or wheeled vehicles, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, there's something that we, we only have a few shots to take and we want to make sure it's focused on the things that we want to kill. In that case, we could build a priority fire zone over that area. So if we were instructed, hey, we're only killing, you know, BMPs of this mech company, well, then we can prioritize and just do a scan there and it's going to ignore this stuff for us or we could put no fire zones over those things now that we've done a scan and we kind of know where they are we could put no fire zones do another scan however you want to do it now the thing is we've done this scan do another one so they're fresh all right so we've done the scan the rest of our flight does not have this information they're not seeing what we see and again Typically speaking, you're only going to have one aircraft out of about four, at least in the U.S. Army, that has a radar on board. All right, other countries, they, 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 if they buy the aircraft, they probably buy the radar with it. They might have more, but, but we're just talking sort of U.S. side of things. Not everybody's going to have a radar. That's okay, because we can send all of this data to our wingmen. So we're going to hit report. We're going to hit targets. And we can send primary, which is going to be that guy, or we can send all. All right, so if we send all, and again, we're going to send it to whoever we want to. We hit send. We're not going to get the message. All of this information right here is going to populate their TSD. Okay, all of that information. Now, is that targetable information? I.e., are they going to be able to just pull the trigger and launch and start hitting all these targets? No, that's not how it works. That's a completely different... Again, this is where the TSD and the FCR are two different systems and they're not necessarily tied to one another. Okay, the FCR is creating information that it's then putting into your TSD and then you're sharing it from one TSD to another, that's it. So we're just sharing this information and now again, if I'm gun two, I've just gotten all this information. It's all been passed to me and now, and it would be helpful too to have those PFCs, I can start moving my, uh, pads around and start finding these targets All right so in this situation i've got the tsd target i've got the tads looking at it and i can look and see that i've got it there all right so this is a way that we can correlate things so when we talk about how to use the fcr and actually give targets to people let's do uh let me select fcr again all right and we're gonna do a scan oops i hit the wrong button all right so we're doing a scan once again, because I don't have any priority fire zones, it's just going to pick up what it thinks is the, the greatest threat. In this case, the Shilka off to our right. We've got RF handover. So I'm going to hit this. And it's going to ask us who we want to hand it off to. And again, this is in this scenario, let's say, and I've got some, some footage I'll throw in here. But there's another aircraft who does not have a radar. I want to send him that target. This is no longer going to be my target. This is going to be his target. This is going to be my new priority target, and then my uh, alternate, my next to shoot target will be something else, probably one of these uh, BMPs. Let's do another scan, just everything's fresh. Picking up 20 targets. All right, so I'm going to hit RF handover to G2. I'm going to hit send, and you can see my target just deleted because it, the computer is saying, okay, I gave that to somebody else. This is no longer my problem. This one's my problem, and this is my next problem. Okay, so now I could hand that off. Let's say we had G3. Let's just do G2 again. And it's just going to keep rotating that. So I can just sit here and keep plopping off targets to guys. And I've got the radar. And I could shoot one. So let's just shoot one. And I can still hand off the next one to another guy. All right, so I can just keep doing this. Just handing those off to other guys. I know it's a lot to cover, and again, I'm trying to just hit the wave tops. I'm trying to just hit the, the fun parts and stuff you can use. What I would encourage you is uh, get your buddies and just go out and kind of play around with it and, uh, and, and see what works for you. 
I know it's a lot of button pushing and that's maybe not fun, but it's not hard. It's just something you got to jump into and get going. So what I'm going to do is slice in some uh, footage that I made yesterday with Hyde from the 51st uh, Virtual Fighter Wing. It's part of the 1st Regiment. They do all the helicopter stuff for the 51st. Um, so I'll add in that footage, uh, a little bit of stuff that we were doing where he's off of my wing and we're shooting some targets. But otherwise, I think you get the point. We can collect data from the FCR, put it into our TSD, transmit that TSD information to someone else. Uh, we can also, we don't even need FCR to create targets, to create priority fire zones, no fire zones, waypoints, all that good stuff, and share it amongst our flight. And really the challenge is how to use that information to create situational awareness within the flight. I'm gonna do another scan and let's see what it gives me. I should be picking up at least, you have the first two targets, it's successfully categorizing the two Shilkas that we do have uh, out there as targets. So my primary target is actually off to my right, almost out of sight uh, from my radar. So what I'm gonna do is uh, RF hand over to you, G2, I'm gonna hit send, and then it's gonna automatically change my next target to my my next to shoot target as my primary target when I do that. So I'm gonna send you this target, you go ahead and fire when ready, and then I'm gonna fire on my primary target, and we should be destroying both these Shulkas at the same time. You ready? All right, I'm gonna send you the data, right. and you just give me a short count when you're ready to fire. Received. Okay. And I'm ready on give your mark. Give it a little bit. In constraints, three, two, one, rifle. Rifle, nice. All right, okay. my target's on. over there to the left. Yours should be right there. All right, there's a shack on yours. Mine's a little bit further out. And yep, two good hits. All right, cool. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at that BDA report. So send me a BDA report, if you will. And all right, received. And I can go into cord, shot. And then these are all of our shot targets. Uh, so it's telling me that these two are my own targets. So that was an RF missile at an air defense at grid, blah, blah, blah. And then a BM or a or, or tracked vehicle, armored vehicle at blah blah blah, and then two data link RF missiles at that spot as well. So all that data is there. If I do another scan, we're still going to be picking up a lot of the same dirty battlefield. So that really comes into uh, understanding what you've engaged so far and uh, how to cycle through it. So honestly, I could just uh, hit my next to shoot and cycle through. And make sure that I'm not uh, focusing on the wrong, the wrong target. And I can pass that on. Uh, we don't have the zoom feature yet, but there is a way to zoom in on the uh, on the FCR. Be able to uh, expand on points. There's one thing I've not tried is actually selecting manually selecting a target on the FCR. So we can do that. So here I'm gonna manually select a target. And I'm going to send you this target. And you can fire when ready. Received. And rifle. Alright, I'm going to select a different target. And I'm rifle. You should be hitting a target in the back of the formation somewhere in there. Mine should be somewhere on the left side. Probably mine to hit. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, okay. I see your guys there on the hillside, on the right side there. Okay. All right, as I warned you at the beginning of this video, I know there's a lot I'm trying to throw at you, and I apologize if it's a jumble. Just watch it two or three times. It'll probably make sense. Uh, and if I see a lot of kind of the same questions or confusion, if I've created more confusion, I'll go back and try to neck it down into smaller chunks and create a better video. Again, this is sort of a stream of consciousness, and I apologize, uh, but hopefully you guys get the wave tops. Thanks again for everyone who's watching, for YouTube and Patreon supporters. Uh, a big thank you to you guys. Again, thanks to Hyde for helping me out and making this video. And we'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy.